This is Victory House. I mean, this month, I wanted to go around. I started working on a particular um, stuff that I, I thought we should share. But God wanted us to go this route. I wanted us to say something that was complementary to relationship goals. So I wanted to talk about the Good Samaritan. You know, beautiful stuff that we've been working on. But God wanted differently. So I will be starting something I call How It Works. Look at somebody say, How It Works. I like to watch documentaries a lot. Um, because it, it, sometimes I just better than just watching Hollywood. And it, it will raise your blood temperature up and then my my kids i like that sometimes they say it's not even real it's just a movie <laughs> so i like documentary because there's some sense of reality to it you know and there's something uh, there's a website called how stuff works that kind of just documents how things work and i think in the kingdom of god too we need to get that kind of mindset of how things work can i tell you the truth that in the kingdom of God, many people don't know how things work. They know what things are, but they don't know how. There are many times, if you've been reading our scripture with us, amen, we are what, where are we now? Hallelujah. I think I need to be calling people, because this one, I'll just say, where are we? And somebody will chorus the answer. You must read this Bible, though, because we, we don't want to be raising people that don't know the Bible. People will come to church and they will tell you stuff and you won't even know. And people will say, Amen. <laughs> ah, no. Uh, you know, things like that. Heaven, like the Bible said, heaven help those who have said. So they preach on pastor. Which preach? Pastor is that pastor is saying nonsense. That's not from scripture. The Bible did not say heaven help those who have themselves. No. <laughs> you know, so where are we? Before I get carried away. Eh? 23 of Matthew, Mark, Luke. Okay. So people can check who is reading. If you are reading the Bible with us, let me see your hand. Ah. You said you need to catch up the other day when you held the mic. <laughs> you should have caught up by now. The catching up should not be every day now. When we did catch up in 2017, we finished it now, didn't we? <laughs> Some of us are ahead. I like that. Some of us are ahead. Yeah, I mean, John, I think, I had to stop after a while. I'm like, I need to be with our people. Huh? You need to read this thing. And I, will, I think I need to take it more seriously now. So, Sunday, I'm going to check. And there are people I'm going to expect to know. Ministers, you are there. Uh, you are a leader in church, you are there. So, uh, you will not lie. Huh? Amen. I mean, I, I believe better things concerning you. You won't lie. So if you have not read, you will say you have not read. But I will have you stand up. Like I was telling somebody the other day that, what should I do to you? You came late. You made everybody to come to start things late. And the guy was looking at me like, Pastor, you didn't even celebrate me that I came. Yeah, you came, but you came late. <laughs> so, so on Sunday, I will stand people up. Can I, can I get amen to that? If you are watching on live stream, on Sunday, we will stand you up. <laughs> So you must read the Bible. Come on. I mean, this thing is, you can't even listen, please. It takes less than a movie. Hmm? It takes less than a movie. If you go to the gym, stock headphones. I, I believe every Christian should have headphones. You know, I have a lot of headphones. I invest a lot in headphones, my wife knows. Uh, and it's because of this reason, so that you can keep the word of God entering. So one of the scriptures we've read, which is Luke chapter 24, Jesus had risen up, and the Bible said he appeared to his disciples, but they did not know that it was Jesus. And Jesus was talking to them, and they were saying, uh, they were sad and all of that, and they were telling Jesus that, um, sir, uh, you don't know what has happened. Are you a stranger here? <laughs> you don't know what has happened, that Jesus Christ of Nazareth, a very good man, they killed him, and some of the women among us have gone to the tomb, and they can't find him there. <laughs> and Jesus looked at them and said, oh, foolish people. <laughs> Sometimes Jesus can be harsh. So when you see pastor, he's a little stern. He's following after Jesus. Amen. I won't call people fools. Amen. But, you know, they translated it for us that way. <laughs> that Jesus said, why are you slow to believe? 
Why are you slow to be? So they knew the words. These guys had been following Jesus for three and a half years, but they still did not know the how. And if you don't know the how, you may know the what, but it won't work for you. That's why you see people that have been in church for so many years. That's why you see people doing this prayer and fasting and they will waste it. Because they don't know how. And it will now look like God is a liar. It will look like God is fake. But they do not know how. And please, understand that knowing how is not a matter of how long you have known that thing. There are people that have been around church as long as church is, but they don't know many things. The fact that you come to church and you know that this pastor says something, you say, hmm, hmm, or you say, deep. <laughs> In fact, sometimes when I hear that deep, I don't know how to pass it. I don't know how to understand what people mean. Because when people say deep, it's just another f- word for saying, hmm, which doesn't mean anything, you know? So it doesn't matter what you say or don't say. Sometimes people don't know the how because they are not paying attention, because they are not really getting what is... But my, my belief in, in this uh, couple of uh, several teachings that we're going to be talking about, they may be elementary, they may be rudimentary, they may be the basics of our faith in Christ Jesus, but they are very important. Because if we understand them very well, we will do exploits. The Bible says, they that know their God shall be strong and they will do exploit. So when we are not doing exploit, it's an ignorance issue. And the ignorance is not that we don't know about, we just don't know how. We don't know how. So many people are not ignorant of the what, but they are ignorant of the how. My prayer for you in this season is that you will know the how in the name of Jesus. In Matthew chapter 13 verse 11, one of the scriptures we've read too, Jesus told his disciples, he said, For unto you it has been given to know the mysteries of the kingdom. Can I tell you the truth? This kingdom of God operates on mysteries. Mysteries are divine secrets. And until you get the mystery, you don't gain the mastery. When people are void of mastery in life, it's a function of the fact that they do not know the mystery. Oh, there's mystery to finances. There's mystery. There's mystery. You know, when you read 2 Corinthians, when you read 1 Corinthians, when you read 2 Corinthians, you see when Paul was talking to the Corinthians and talking about the fact that there is the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. There is a grace that people can give and even it does not make sense. There's just that grace. It's a mystery. If you look at the mystery of Jesus dying on the cross, it's a mystery. How can God want to save the old world and lose something? It doesn't make sense, right? But if you understand that mystery, you'll be able to gain mastery. And my prayer in this season is as, as we go through this discussion, you will get into the realm of mastery in the name of Jesus. Deuteronomy chapter 29 verse 29 says, Deuteronomy 29, 29. It says, the secret things belong to God or mysteries that have not yet been revealed are still with God. But as soon as they are revealed, they belong to us and we can use them. And it can be beneficial to us. And for many people, many things in the kingdom of God are still a secret with God. They have not been revealed to them. But in this season, they will be revealed to you. You will see clearly in the name of Jesus. So I want you to have a, a, a different perspective as we talk about some of the things we're going to be talking about in the next few weeks. Don't come to church like I know. In fact, every time you approach the word of God, approach it blank. Approach it without preconception, pre, uh, uh, pre-information. Don't prejudge it. When you hear a scripture, when you hear a sermon, receive it. The reason why many people, after a while, don't get blessed in church is because they think they know everything. Even if you have heard the message before. I have listened to some messages forever. <laughs> I, I like that. I listen to message a lot. In one message, I will listen, listen, listen. I will listen to a song. I will play the, I mean, people that enter my car, they notice that one season I will play one song or four songs. And I will play it until I play it. <laughs> because there is something that happens. Many people don't get it the first time. Many people don't get it. In fact, that's why the Bible says faith comes by hearing like a continuous thing. Because the first time you didn't get it. Many things we say in church, many people, it will take them many days to get it. That's why it is always good to write 
It is always also good to go and listen. Do you know I listen to these messages myself? I do. I, of course, I listen to it for quality control. <laughs> Where I'm like, I try, 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 this person. <laughs> God help us. Or even when I see myself, sometimes I'm like, young man, can't you just stand? But uh, I think it's just the makeup. Amen. Because sometimes I'll, say, I'll tell myself when I finish listening to those messages, when I preach now, I'll just stand. <laughs> And immediately I get here, the first thing I do is this. <laughs> but that's, that's okay. But I listen to them because they bless me too. They bless me too. So if you are here, you come to church, before we finish service, the next thing is you are thinking of the food at home, and then after you hear that message, you don't hear it ever again. You have not gotten the best out of it. You have not gotten the best out of it. The 66 books of the Bible. Some of, I've read the Bible many, more than maybe five, seven times now. And every time I still find it. Do you know there are stories in the Bible that sometimes when I hear it, and I'm not making it up, it sounds new to me. I'm telling you, I've been around this thing for a long time. Both as a baby, as a son, as a child, as, or in all kinds of fashion, in all kinds of denominations. I was joking with somebody the other day. I said I've been part of four denominations. Seventh-day Adventist. Um, okay, let me not count them, but... <laughs> Before some people uh, send me a letter, but I've been part of all the money. And sometimes I will still hear things they are still new. So in this season, this is my admonition to you. First Corinthians chapter 8, verse 2. First Corinthians chapter 8 and verse 2. First Corinthians 8, 2. Those who think they know something do not know yet as they ought to know. Can I tell you the, the secret of gaining the best in God? Come to him like you don't know. The more you don't know, the more you can know. I've told you the story before. I went to preach somewhere. And you know, sometimes there's information makes you cocky. You feel a little proud. You know, we've been around this church thing. We've gone to seminary. We've read books. We've, you know, so in your mind, you have figured many things out. So you think you know something. So I went to this church. It's a redeemed Christian church of God church. When I got there, they said they meet in high school. So in my mind, I'm like, some small operations. Maybe I can even give them a few tips. <laughs> that I just start every day. You know? And so I got there, and they were sitting down. I was just wondering, ah, why are they packing so many chairs? And by the time I sat down, it was scanty. So I was wondering, why, are they, why do they have this many chairs in this place? Ah, and I know there are many churches in Maryland. So, start, service started, they had this Bible study, a few people came. Before they gave me the mic, there was no chair that was empty. I was, <laughs> when they gave me the mic, I couldn't just express my shock on the <laughs> mic that, where, where did you all come from? And when, I, when they finished the service, I went to meet the pastor. I said, Pastor, wow, you guys are doing some great things here. I said, how are you doing it? He said, we don't know how to do it. Ah, and I, I, I heard God whisper to me, that that's the secret. They have accepted their inability. They, they don't see themselves as the expert. And that's how to learn. If you want to know, don't think you already know. When you come to church as expert, you know some people come to church, it's what pastor didn't say. I, I, have, I have talked to somebody before. The guy was telling me, that preacher made 14 grammatical errors. I was like, this person is not okay. <laughs> This, you don't need to be talking to this kind of human being. You, are you, you counted grammatical errors in a message? You must be idle for, to the highest order. How, what, what's that? It may not make grammatical sense. Let him make spiritual sense. That's okay for me. Can I get amen to that? If you like, let him put past before present and future. That's his problem. Come out. Be, be healed. And I'm healed. It's okay. I mean, many of the things that do big things. They may not look too refined, too proper, too all of that. But it, big things happen from them. So what am I saying tonight? And where am I going tonight? I'm trying to tell you this. The perspective to have in the kingdom, to know more, is this ever learning. I'm going to get something from God today. I'm going to get something in church today. When I go to church today, something is going to drop into my life. And it will change my life forever. And when you get that thing, you stay on it. You walk it. You, 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 you 
masticate it. You, 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 you do all you can with that word. You do all you can with that word. There are sometimes I have come to church service. Even when I'm preaching, a word drops in my spirit. And I will go, I will, or even on my phone, I will search. What does the Bible say about this? I want to know more about this thing. And then you, you delve yourself into because you don't know as you ought to know. As long as we are on this earth, we can learn. As long as we are, even in the things that you think you know, even in the things that you have done over and over and over and over and over and over again, you can still learn more. Look at your neighbor. Say, you can still learn more. I mean, look at Paul in Philippians chapter 3 and verse 10. Philippians 3 verse 10. At this time, Paul had done so many mighty things for God. And Paul was saying, his prayer was that I may know him. Are you kidding me? How can Paul say he doesn't know him? Paul was saying, my prayer is that I may know him. So who are you? Who am I to now say we already know everything? No, you don't know everything. You don't know as, as you ought to know. And that's why many people don't work the things of the kingdom. Because they don't know it. They think they know, but they do not know. But in this season, you will know. In the name of Jesus. So in this first um, set of how things work, I want to talk about what I call faith to faith. Look at your neighbor, say faith to faith. So I want to talk about how faith works. How, how faith works. Many people, you, they use the word, I believe. They use the word, uh, I'm expecting. And sometimes they've used it so much that it does not mean anything. Because some people will say something like, do you have money on you? I believe I have money on me. So the, the word I believe is, I think... Because I believe it's different if you understand it from the context of scripture from the way they have used it there. And so people have bastardized it. But in this season, I'm believing God will give us understanding more and more in this area. Can I get amen to that? Yeah. So let's start the journey from Romans chapter 117. I'll take my time. Because I, I, I want us in Victory House to be people of knowledge. To be people that we just don't know what, we know how. We know how to work things. So let's start from here. Romans 1, 17. For in the gospel, the righteousness of God is revealed. A righteousness that is by faith from first to last. Another scripture says from faith to faith. Just as it is written, the righteous shall live by faith. So in the gospel... The righteousness that we have in Christ Jesus, how we receive this right standing with God, because that's what righteousness means. This right standing with God was not a result of anything we really did, but a result of what we embraced, what we believe. And he's now saying that the way we came into the kingdom to now be in right standing with God is the way we live in that kingdom. So the way we came into the kingdom is that we believe the work Jesus did, that he did it on our behalf, we received that work, that work was appropriated to us, and because of we, our belief in the work that was, has been done for us, we now enjoy it. The same way, that's how we live. That's how we do everything. That's how we work at get a job. That's how we get a spouse. That's how we get a, 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 an admission. Whatever we need to get, that's how we do it. It is by faith. But you see, what happens to us is that we start this journey by faith. And after we start by faith, we move away from faith. Then we want to move into works. We want to move into, I must do it. I must work it out. I must make it happen. I must, you know, it's, it's very amazing. God will start something for people. God will put somebody like Joseph, for example. Let's imagine that God had placed Joseph in Pharaoh's palace. And Joseph will now take it as his responsibility to sustain himself in that palace. Now, I'm not saying Joseph be careless. But you see, the God that brought you there is still the same God that will sustain you. And the way he brought you there is the way he will sustain you. If he brought you there by faith, he's going to sustain you by faith. So that's why we want to talk about from faith to faith. And since this is a year of victory, you will be glad to know how faith relates to victory. First John chapter 5 and verse 4. First John chapter 5 and verse 4. First John chapter 5 and verse 4. The Bible says, for everyone born of God overcomes the world. 
Everyone that is born of God is already an overcomer. You are not going to overcome. I think it was one of the Bible lessons we had some time ago. Oh, I think, no, it was the, the Wednesday service last week. When the man of God was saying that, we don't fight for victory. We fight from victory. We have already won. We are not going to win. Because so many people mix it, mix it up. Oh, we shall overcome. You know, I used to sing that song when I was a little young boy. I watched a film that time. I think I was still in Nigeria. And I watched the film. It was, I think it was about Martin Luther King. And there was these black Negro people that just started singing, We shall overcome. We shall overcome someday. Do you guys don't know it. Deep in my... If you don't know it, we'll check your salvation. I do believe we shall overcome someday. Very nice song, but it's not very correct. Because this scripture says, 1 John chapter 5, verse 4, For everyone that is born of God shall not overcome, has already overcome the world. Can I get amen to that? For everyone born of God overcomes the world. I even like the fact that he didn't say overcame overcomes like he has won yesterday he's still winning now so it's not like he has won now now he's now losing <laughs> no everyone that is born of god overcomes the world and this is the victory that overcome the world even our faith so in the year of victory ladies and gentlemen if you don't know how the how of faith you won't enjoy that victory the victory will look like defeat you will, see, you will see victory, but it will look like defeat. Because sickness will present himself to you, and you will be seeing defeat. But that sickness is victory. Because the Bible says, for everyone that is born of God already overcomes the world. So if sickness shows up like defeat, I know I already overcame. So I will attack sickness from the position of health. Because I have already won. I am not going to win. So I'm not going to be negotiating with the sickness in such a way that the sickness will think it has a hopper hand. No, I have already won. So sickness understand, I can't be sick. Oh yeah. That's the way I treat my body. Because sometimes I sneeze, I, I tell my body, you know, I, there's a kind of consciousness I've been building around myself. I'm not going to go and sleep. And It's not that I don't get tired. Don't get me wrong. I do get tired. I need some rest and all of that. But I don't want to be sick. Because I understand that for everyone that is born of God overcomes the world. And what is in the world? The world is the devil and the things of the world. Especially th th these elemental things like sickness and all of that. It's the world. So you have overcome. I declare that overcoming status will be real to you in this season. And so he said, the victory that overcomes the world is our faith. So faith is very important. Faith is very important. And the intention of God is that we move from faith to faith. That we graduate in our faith. That we work our faith better. That our faith, we, 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 we translate from one level of glory. From one level of manifestation and expressing our faith to another level. So he wants us to be cascading our victory. He wants us to be breaking our own records. If you have had anything good happen to you, he wants you to do better. Because the Bible says in, first, in Proverbs chapter 4 and verse 18, it says the path of the righteous is like a shining light that shined brighter and brighter unto a perfect day. So let's try to define what faith is. Let's try to define what faith is. I say faith is a force that imposes the super on the natural. Faith is the force that imposes the super on the natural. Faith is what makes a natural life supernatural naturally. If you are a man, if you are a woman that knows how to live by faith, that knows how to stay in faith, that knows how to operate by faith, you will be living in this natural world as if you are not a natural man. So you will be superimposing the natural on uh, the supernatural or the super on the natural such that your life will just be simply supernatural. The Bible says in Hebrews chapter 11 verse 3, Hebrews chapter 11 verse 3. It says, by faith, we understand that the universe was formed at God's command. 
so that the natural or the seen or the touchables was made out of not the seen or the non-touchable. So the super or the supernatural was imposed by faith on the natural so that what you can't see now started making what you can see happen. Can I tell you that the supernatural controls the natural? The supernatural controls the natural. If you don't believe it, ask the story of Job. Before what happened to Job happened to Job, it had been, it had been dialogued, deliberated, debated in the supernatural, in the spirit realm. So what was now happening in the physical was catching up with what had happened in the spirit. And so if you understand that faith is that force that imposes the super of God on the natural, you will understand that even before you show up at interviews, you would have taken control. Even before you, your children go to school, you would have taken control. So many people, they are too late. They are reacting because the thing has happened in the natural. It has already been finished in the spiritual. They have concluded the matter. You know, back in the day when I used to watch some of these uh, funny African magic something kind of thing, you see some funny guys. They will talk in some covens and some black, dark places and they will say, so and so person, ah, we have finished him. And what they mean is that they have finished him in the spirit. Now, you will, some people will laugh about those things like just movie. No, no, no. There's some reality to it. There's some reality because we see it in scripture. We saw Job. <laughs> before, before the devil left the presence of God, he had finished Job. Because you remember, God told him, don't touch, don't, don't just the skin, but live his life. Because if not that, he would have died. Everything around Job died. Because the devil had finished him. But I believe in this season, you and I will know how to make that force of praise to act, uh, to work in our, uh, on our behalf in Jesus' name. Faith is also the way to live in the kingdom. Faith is the way to live. We don't live in any other way. We don't live by any other means. We don't live by any other circumstance or any other reality apart from the reality of faith. If you don't understand faith, you won't enjoy your Christian journey. Because faith is how we live in this, in this world. In this, in, in, in this our Christian journey. Faith is how we live. That's what Romans chapter 1 verse 17 says. It says the righteous will live by faith. Habakkuk chapter, uh, chapter 2 and verse 4 too says that. The righteous shall live by faith. Hebrews chapter 10 and verse 38. It says anyone that draws back my soul will have no pleasure. Because the just should live by faith. The people that have been made right by God. They need to live by faith. We don't walk by sight. We don't even walk by what we have heard. You don't walk by what people tell you. You don't walk by, oh, pastor, this has happened. No, you, do, you don't walk by the natural facts. You have to walk by a new and higher order. And that's the order of God. And it's the order of faith. You walk by faith. And faith is, is, is the lifestyle of the kingdom. What is faith? Faith is a living force that draws on the living word to produce living fruits. Faith is a living force. It draws from the living word to produce living proofs. Ladies and gentlemen, I have heard people say something like this. Where is the God of Elijah? I think the answer should be this. Where are the people like Elijah? Where are the people that will hold God literally like Elijah? We are the people that will be able to take the living force of faith on the living word of God and produce living proofs. Proofs. Ladies and gentlemen, our world needs proofs. Our world needs results. You can't be a child of God, come here on Sunday, raise up your hand, and then you will go to work. Somebody that was in club on Friday, all throughout Friday, is still doing better than you. It's an anathema, sir. It's an anathema. You, we, me and you should be concerned. We should be concerned. I'm not saying that they, they, they can't do well and all of that. They should do well. But you have an advantage and you must know how to leverage that. You must know how to leverage the advantage that you go will empower you so that you'll be able to do natural things supernaturally. Daniel was not a pastor. Daniel was a career guy. And Daniel was career guy for presidents. 
four kingdoms. And you know those guys didn't used to do eight terms. Um, excuse me, two terms. Eight years. No. They were monarchy kind of people. So it's until they die. <laughs> they were the African. I think they, those guys were African in it. You know, the African one is the one that wants to sit on everything. He gets the can, sit on the can, and then look for how he would throw that can or put that can in his coffin. Then he's going. That's how those guys were then. So Daniel was there, four of them. Why? Spirit of excellence. These people knew how to walk the things of God. So faith is a living force. And the source of that living force is the living word. Is the rema of God. That's why I keep saying, let's read the Bible. Let's read the Bible. It, because that's where faith comes from. That's the raw material for faith. Let me tell you this. The more of the word of God you have inside of you, the more you will have abundance to reply. Most people, when things bad things happen, they, they want to go to one place and quickly look at. No, 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 no. It's too late. You need to have a reservoir. You need to be able to have something that will well up from within inside you that can answer that thing. I don't know if you have been in a situation before where you didn't premeditate the answer, but a scripture just so maybe you didn't quote the word of God verbatim, but something from scripture just came to you. That's how you should live your life. And so, faith is that force that draws that living word. So, the word becomes living when you read the written word and you start the written word inside of you and you allow the spirit of God to brood on that living word, on that written word, it becomes living word. It becomes rema. You see, the word of God in the Greek Bible can be translated into two uh, words when you hear word of God. They see that the Logos, which is like the written word, the Logos. There is also the Rima, or the spoken word, the lively word. The reason why many people think the Bible is a storybook is, at best, for most people, the word of God has only is only written. They have not seen it become spoken. It has not become animated. It has not come to life. But I believe in this season that the word of God will become living in and around your life in the name of Jesus. We will see results that this Jesus is still alive in Jesus' name. So faith is superimposing the truth of the word of God on the facts of life. Faith is knowing how to superimpose or to put the reality of truth over facts. Because there are facts in life. There are facts. One of the facts may be that you came late. Have you, have you ever been in an endeavor or in a class and it seems you are, you, you, you are two years late? You, you, you seem to be two years later than your colleagues. Your mates have gone two years ahead of you. They have given birth three years ahead of you. They have given birth... For, that's a fact. You can't change that. But can you put truth on that fact and make that fact ir invalid and make that fact not be able to do anything? Yes, you can. Because it is, was a fact that Jesus was buried, but there was the truth. The truth was the resurrection power. So when the resurrection power came on the fact of death, the fact of death had to submit itself to the truth of the resurrection. And I see that somebody listening to me this evening, the, the truth of the word of God is superimposing itself on the facts of your life. If you believe it, say a bigger amen. Amen. Faith is a, is a function of the rema of God. You need to know how to be able to derive the truth from the word of God. And that's why you, you read the word of God a lot. That's why it's good to read the New Testament. That's why you should not be a Christian that just comes to church what the pastor said. You know, and some people come and meet you and say, Pastor, where is that in the Bible? I don't think anybody should be saying that in 2018. Because even Google, if you don't know it, if you say, for example, something like, um, um, Jesus is Lord. That everyone might confess that Jesus is Lord. That phrase, you just remember that you wanted to... If you go to Google, everyone might confess that Jesus is Lord. Bible, after it, it will give you the scripture. Shake it now. Eh? Did I say that? Excuse me. <laughs> oh, Lord. God help me. Faith draws on hope to produce evidence. <laughs> 
Okay, let me go like this. Faith draws on hope to produce the evidence. <laughs> oh, Lord. Some people online will not understand. It's a local joke. It's very personal in here. There's something about evidence that um, tickles people. <laughs> so faith draws on hope to produce the evidence. Now, 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 when we talk about hope, hope is the blueprint. It speaks of the blueprint that you need to sustain faith. Hope is the blueprint. Because Hebrews chapter 11 verse 1, let's read that, and I'm probably wrapping it up. I'm going to take my time on this, so I won't rush it. Hebrews chapter 11 verse 1. The Bible says, now faith is the confidence. Another translation says, now faith is the assurance. In what we hope for. So, you see, when we are talking about faith, there needs to be what we hope for. There needs to be hope. Hope is a function. You need hope to make faith to work. If there is no hope, faith doesn't have the raw material to work. So, faith needs a hope. And hope is the blueprint which we need to base our faith on. Another scripture that is of importance is Romans chapter 4. Romans chapter 4. Romans chapter 4. And I'll read from verse 17. Romans chapter 4 and verse 17. <clears throat> the Bible says, As it is written, I have made you a father of many nations. Is our father in the sight of God, in whom he believed. The God who gives life to the dead and calls into being things that were not. Verse 18. Against hope, Abraham in hope believed. <laughs> so, what made Abraham to eventually become the father of Isaac was not just because God said it, but Abraham was able to hold on to hope. Hope was doing something there. And you see, Hebrews chapter 11 that I've been reading in different parts, I've read verse 1, I've read verse 3. Hebrews chapter 11 is a story, is a chapter in scripture that talks about people who by faith did things. And Abraham was also there. And what the Bible says was, Abraham by faith had this child. And now this scripture in Romans chapter 4 is now giving us a fuller story of how by faith Abraham had this child. He says, Abraham hoped in hope. He, it was against or contrary to hope. But he hoped in hope. So, our, our faith draws on hope. Faith needs hope uh, to be uh, in front of it. And that's why the devil, one of the things the devil likes to do is to make you lose hope. And how does he do it? He presents you the facts. He makes you understand the reality of the fact. He puts you around people that will tell you the details of the facts. He, he, he lets the doctor stress the fact that this is what is happening. This is a bad situation. This is very far gone. This is bad. Then you listen to the news. Ladies and gentlemen, if you want to keep your faith strong, make sure you are working on your hope. Make sure you are working on the information that is feeding your hope. Because the more you look at the wrong things, the more you place the wrong hope in front of you, the more you will be able to believe in that hope. And when you believe in that hope, it's that hope that you will find manifesting in your life. So you need somehow against hope to believe in hope. And I believe that in this season, there are people that will operate in some things that either to have been told them it's not possible. In the name of Jesus. So, faith draws hope. It uses hope to pull down the evidence. And you see, when it works that way, it's not that that thing has to happen physically, tangibly. But like in the case of Abraham, Abraham took the word of God as his hope or as his picture and took that word so literally that he had received Isaac. In fact, if you read Hebrews chapter 11, it said by faith, Abraham offered Isaac. And you and I know that Abraham didn't kill Isaac. But Abraham, when he was leaving home, he had concluded, he had seen a picture that he killed Isaac and he saw a picture that he brought back Isaac home. So when Abraham was going to that mountain, he told Isaac, 
we are going to worship. He told uh, the servant, excuse me, when they were at the, the foot of the mountain, he said, we are going, me and the lad, we are going to the mountain to worship. And we will what? Come back. And that's why the Bible says in Hebrews 11, he said, Abraham, by faith, offered up Isaac. But he did not kill Isaac. But he, what, what the Bible was saying is this. He had the picture. He had the right picture that this boy, though God told me to go and kill him, God will raise him up. <laughs> that's what we're talking about. And that's why you and I need to be careful what we place in front of us. Because those things now become our hope. It feeds our hope. Huh? And, and the, your job and my job is to really keep hope alive. Because where there is hope, where there is hope, if you can keep hope alive, if you can, and that's what many of the times when Jesus is in some situation, he, he tries to make sure that he, he keeps their hope alive. You know, you remember when he showed up at the tomb of Lazarus? When they were telling him, he knew what he was going to do. But you, he, he kept saying, oh, it's not too late now. First of all, he told his disciples, he's asleep. Why was he using those kind of words? He wanted them to see the possibility or have hope that at least something was still possible. But I mean, if somebody is sleeping and if it's a long sleep, we can wake him up, right? So he, he wanted to help their, them because if he just says, our friend is dead, <laughs> let's go and raise him up. They'll say, dead? You mean dead as in dead, dead, dead? <laughs> I mean, you remember Thomas even said, let's go and die with him. <laughs> Yes, sir. So you and I need to learn how to keep up alive. You need to learn how to keep up. I don't care how bad the situation is. If there is hope, if there is hope, if there is hope, if you can keep hope, something can still happen. It doesn't matter how small. It doesn't matter how small that hope is. That's why it is good to, 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 to approach life from the place I believe. I hope I will see the goodness of God. I hope I will see the goodness of God today. Even though the numbers don't look like it. Even though the, the conditions don't look like it. I hope I'm looking forward. And hope is a kind of expectation. Is uh, Hope is like when you order food and you are really hungry. And you are expecting the food. You are looking forward to the food. Or when you are waiting for somebody at the airport, the person is supposed to come. And uh, our president has introduced uh, one nation ban or something like that. You know? And then you are thinking, is the person affected or not? Person affected? But you are expecting that that person will soon show up. So when, whenever they open the doors and people come out, you are looking. You are looking is it the person? Is it the person? Is it the person? That's how hope works. Hope is an elongation. A, an expectation. I am looking forward. I, 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 I want to see. I am on my, on my toes. I am expectant. Because there are many people, they are not expectant. They are not expectant. They are just saying, you know, he's God. He can do what he wants to do. No, that's not how he works. It's not how he works. Expectation is the mother of manifestation. I, I mean, look at Jesus in John chapter 2. Let me close from here. In John chapter 2, Jesus said to Mary, look, Jesus himself said to Mary, woman, my time has not come. I mean, is that not what Jesus said? So what Jesus was invariably saying is that it's not on my schedule. It's not, it's not the right time. But the Bible said Mary did not argue with her, him. Mary just turned back and went to the people and said, be expectant. Whatever, if he just see anything, do it. That's expectation. Expectation is I'm waiting. I'm, Lord, I'm waiting. I'm expecting this school fees will be paid. I, I, I won't go underwater in the name of Jesus. I don't know how it will happen, but it will happen. I'm expecting. Because some people, the way they talk, the way they look, it's almost as if the bad, the worst has happened. And the worst is even in the process. They've just sent you a letter that the worst is about to happen. And you have already died. Oh, Lord. Some people have died before the death came. No. You have to be expectant. You have to say no. No. I know some of us, it seems like our personality is a little bit aggressive and risky. <laughs> you know. <laughs> and then we seem to expect everything. But you can develop it. Yeah. I have, have taught myself to be just expectant of good things. I mean, when you tell me something is bad, I'm still expecting something to happen. Something good is going to happen. Something wonderful. I'm expecting that the situation will change. Because uh, God favors the expectant. 
God loves it. When people are expecting for him, when people are longing for him, when people are waiting to see him, when people are expecting that something will happen, really something will happen. I mean, God can come into a service like he did tonight and it's only people that are expectant that will feel him, that will see him. And sometimes, I don't know if you have been in services, did somebody say, hey, he's here. You say, where is he? Where is he? I don't see him. He says, yeah, he just hear somebody, ah! What is that one doing? Ah! All these people, they were just make No, they were expecting. They were expecting. They were expecting. In Acts chapter 1, the Bible says, Jesus was going to heaven. And he told them, he said, be expectant. I will send the Holy Spirit. And the Bible said they were in Acts chapter 2. They were in one accord, in one place. They didn't know when he was going to come, but they were expectant. He said he will come. We know he will come. So we are expectant. And the Bible said, suddenly, I'm declaring concerning somebody listening to me t- t- tonight. There is a suddenly coming your way. <laughs> I thought you would say a bigger amen. There is a suddenly coming your way. Be expectant. Be expectant. Hope is the currency of hope is expectancy. Be very, very expectant. Based on the word of God, be expectant. God is going to do me good. This year, 28, I don't know how, but it will do me good. That's how to live your life. Live with expectation. Always. Don't leave your house until you can build up expectation. Anything you can do to make your expectation rise up, do it. If you have somebody that boosts your expectation, call the person. If you have music that I boost... I, you create atmosphere that you will just be like, I can't do it. You know, you know when boxers are getting ready, they set themselves up. You know, sometimes they look at the mirror and tell themselves, I can't do it. You know, sometimes when I'm doing gym too, when you are carrying those things, you are looking at the mirror. This guy, you must carry this thing. <laughs> and sometimes you be like, that, was that food really worth it? <laughs> can you rise to your feet this evening? And I want you to look at your neighbor. Say, I expect good things to happen to me. Do you know this 2018 is my year of victory. I expect to win like never before. I will win that my middle name will be changed to win. It will be changed to Victor or Victoria in the name of Jesus.